Hey guys and gals, I'm Chris Olka, Principal Tuba of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, and this is Drill of the Week, number 17, Opposites Attract. Um, I'll cut to the chase here pretty quickly, but just want to say I've had a really busy year and uh, trying to get back into the saddle. Uh, lots of stuff going on in my life with my family and uh, our house and moving from Seattle. It's been a big deal and two international tours and life has been busy, but life has been good. I'm trying to keep this drill of the week thing going because you guys have uh, been fantastic and it seems like it helps. So I hope that uh, I can keep giving back to the tuba playing community. Anyway, I'm going to cut to the chase. I gotta have my notes here and my danger specs. Um, so, opposites attract. This is basically a long tone study. It's a range building exercise. Uh, it creates dynamic control as well as being an endurance builder. Uh, and just a note about why I called it opposites attract uh, is because, as you'll see in the studies, the high register and the low register complement each other, and they should be practiced concurrently. Uh, you shouldn't neglect one for the other. They both have a role in helping the other uh, to be more, uh, have a better sound and be more consistent. So anyway, uh, I'm going to describe what I do. Hopefully there's not too much editing going on. This is going to be a long video because I chose to leave in everything except for spaces between each a little series so that people can play with them. Apparently you guys like to play with these things uh, on and play along with me as if we're warming up together. So I'm leaving this stuff in. So the first thing you do is you start on a low C. It doesn't have to be a low C. It can be a B flat or whatever your low open fundamental on your, your instrument is. And you can certainly start on other uh, notes, but generally starting on the lowest open note uh, that's not a pedal tone is your best sounding note. You pick up a B flat tuba if you're a B flat tuba player. First thing you do usually is play what? A B flat, a low B flat. C tuba, F tuba, E flat. So I'm playing the C tuba. So start on a low C and do some type of arpeggiated slur to an octave above. So low C above, uh, below the bass clef staff, arpeggio, uh, arpeggiated slur to the octave above and hold it for a comfortably long period. This is a long tone. So uh, for this first octave, you're basically just prototyping or benchmarking your best sound over, over an octave spread. So you're starting with a nice full resonant low note, in this case a low C, slur up to second space uh, in the bass clef staff uh, to uh, an open C, and hold it mezzo, mezzo dynamic. Call it mezzo piano to mezzo forte. Take a breath after you've run out of air. Try to keep the sound good. Take a breath and then play a relaxed, non-shifted pedal C. So now you're going down two octaves from the note that you were just at. Down to a pedal C, non-shifted. Relaxed embouchure. Um, doesn't have to be particularly loud, but hold that pedal C for as long as possible with the breath that you're taking. None of this is measured. This is all based on how much air you've got going on. Okay, uh, then take a short, uh, short rest, five, 10 seconds, and repeat that going up a half step. So then you'd start on a C sharp, play an arpeggio of some sort slurred up to a C sharp above that, hold it for as long as you can comfortably with a nice tone. Immediately take a breath and go down to a pedal C-sharp. Non-shifted, comfortable dynamic. Hold it as long as you can. After you've gone around all the way and, you know, so we've started on a low C, we're going to end up, if we're going up chromatically, we're going to end up on a low B up to a B uh, right there at the top of the bass clef staff. Take a break. I'd recommend two minutes, maybe three minutes. Let the blood flow back in your chops. Then after you've taken a break, add another octave to the arpeggio. You'll hear it on the video, but instead of slurring up an arpeggio for one octave, slur up two octaves. Again, starting on low C, slurring up to the high C, two octaves away. And this time, add a diminuendo. Add a diminuendo as you're trying to hold as long as you can, but you're also diminuendoing on the top note. 
um, then go down. As soon as, you've, as soon as you've lost that note, you can no longer diminuendo or you've run out of air. Immediately take a large, comfortable breath and play uh, the open pedal tone. In this case, an open pedal C, non-shifted. Non-shifted is important because you're just really trying to have a, a nice, relaxed embouchure and let the blood flow back in. And again, compare what that top note sounded like with the tone quality of the pedal C. They're going to have different qualities, of course, but you want them to be equally beautiful and cultivated. Uh, so in this uh, second series, when you're adding the uh, second octave with the diminuendo, fight what I call bacon and eggs. And you guys all know what I'm talking about. It's that crackly, fuzzy, crappy, double tone, double buzz, and trash that gets in your sound. You know, like, uh, fight that. I'll tell you, I don't know any professional player that doesn't get that in their sound. The difference between a professional player and uh, an amateur or a student is they know how to get it back out once it gets in there because it gets in everybody's sound. And this, this study will really, really help you get that out. So work on fighting the bacon and eggs as much as you possibly can. Uh, take a short break and then repeat up a half step. Again, so it's just like the, the previous one octave series, but now you've added two octaves with the diminuendo sorry, two octaves, with the diminuendo while fighting the trash in your sound on the top note in the diminuendo. Take another two, two and a half, three minutes break. Then add a third octave. Uh, the same procedure as previously. Go as high as possible. I think in this video, I think the best I could squeak out was a, a double high G above uh, uh, double C. Ignore the shakes that you get in your sound. You're, if you're doing this, I guarantee I'm not the only one, you're going to get shakes in your sound, both on the high note, the very highest note, during the diminuendo. And when you go to take that breath and stay relaxed and plant a, a pedal C after playing a double high C, your sound is going to be shaky. That's because you're really taxing your embouchure. But, but the whole point of some of this is we're, we're combining so many things, we're multitasking. Um, that shake that you're getting in the low register, it's okay. Just be able to make the, the note happen. Um, this is where that's the endurance, uh, component, the endurance building component that we're, we're trying to add in this study. So I think that covers it all. I should say that, um, I'm just getting back from having taken a week off from the flu. The flu chopped me down last week and it got a hold of me. So you're hearing real grown up grandpa type chop stuff here. It, it's not my best playing by any stretch, but you know, this study I started working on uh, a couple of weeks ago because I was, I've been fighting colds and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, you know, what if I did this? What if I did that? What if I did the other? And I'll tell you, this one will get you back in the saddle pretty quick. This is like my third day playing. And I did this study yesterday and it whooped my ass. So I thought, you know what? Ding, ding, ding. We should do a drill of the week. So drill of the week number 17, opposites tracked. Hope it helps and uh, hope to keep more of these coming soon. Take care.